What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Making Podcasts Great Again. I am your tech stuff guy, Jay Nog, and we are here, of course, with the President of the United States of Mar-a-Lago of America, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Mr. President, how are you today? Uh, well, it's, it's a very bright day in our country because... Even Sleepy Joe can't stop Shark Week. Did you know it's now Shark Week? This is one of these. It's a t- they're tough. They're tough sharks. You ever see Joe's? It's it's a pretty, isn't it? A, a it's like a, a little bit of a sad time right now. What did you see, Joe's? I did. I did see Jaws. Yeah, great movie. Oh, look at that! He didn't see Seinfeld. Are you the same tech stuff as last week? I am. <laughs> okay, well, you know, Roy Scheider and Richard Dreyfus. I think they're both. Kushner, so I thought maybe you would have avoided Joe's as well. <laughs> and Joe's was tough. It was it was tough. And uh, so I've always I've never liked sharks, but I respect them. So I respect Shark Week. I don't like it, but I respect it. And I think even sharks are too tough for Sleepy Joe. He probably wanted to shut down Shark Week. Like, come on, Jack, no sharks. This, no, but they said no, sir. We're gonna have Shark Week. So it's uh, things are looking bright. Things are looking up. The Sharks, they're like doing their own January 6th against Sleepy Joe. They're saying, you won't shut us down. We're going to fight for our rights to be Sharks. Have you have you seen Shark Week for, for years? Have you always tuned in for it? No, I never watch it. Oh, okay. No, I respect Sharks. But I, I respect like it, but you don't... They're, they're, they're tough, but they're also nasty, and they're very weak personalities. You know, like a dolphin has a personality. Sharks, is, they're like. Excuse why me. is it? Why is a shark weak? No weak personality. They're very why? strong. I'm not. I wouldn't call a shark weak to its face, but it's <laughs> their personalities. They're very like. Hello, sir. We're gonna eat you, chomp chomp, and that's it. No conversation. You know, they don't have talent. They don't have charisma, but they're very tough. I will say that. But dolphins, on the other hand, have have talent. <laughs> like the squeak, you know, they squeak it <laughs> and very excited, and 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 you know, their noses are shaped like big penises. So you know, they 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 you know, probably they do a lot of damage during sixty nine. So it's it's just sexual when it comes to the dolphin versus the shark. No, no, I don't think it's no because dolphins smile. Mm-hmm. And it was a story. I remember reading this crazy story about this woman. She was a trainer and she was like stimulating the dolphin and the dolphin fell in love with her. Yes. And, uh, you know, probably, you know, the trainer's probably me tooling the dolphin now, <laughs> you know, the dolphin didn't get consent, didn't ask for my consent. You were the one diddling the dolphin. How can the dolphin ask for consent? But they always smile. And you had Flipper, who was tough and and sort of talented. And, you know, so I just never liked the killer whales. You know, they were just big and black and very violent. They're white, too, though. They're black and white. Well, they're like Obama. You know, (laughs) there's sure there's some white in there, but the violent black covers up a lot of the a lot of the white. And you see how they woke? You see critical dolphin theory, critical whale theory. They try to say, oh, they're orcas. We don't call them killer whales anymore. We call them orcas. And guess what? I call them killer whales. We're not going to be PC, not when they're murdering white trainers. <laughs> Isn't orca probably the scientific name for them? So people are just calling them orcas because that's their name. No, that's not what they say. Very smart. Try, try again, tech stuff. No, but the woke, they get very woke and they say, we don't like the image of calling them killer whales. And I go, you know what I don't like the image of? A killer whale killing a great white trainer. <laughs> you call them great white trainers? <laughs> Have you ever seen that the documentary about orcas? What's it called? Uh, I'm going blank on it. Um, Is it called Chicago Fish? No, no, orca documentary. Is it called Blackfish? No, it is called 
Blackfish. Yes, Blackfish. I have never wanted to fire a tech stuff person so strongly and so quickly than I do right now. I was looking for it. Blackfish. Blackfish. No. Five seconds later. Blackfish. Yes, sir. I didn't think, I didn't think it was called Blackfish for a second. Well, I thought you were trying to make a joke. Well, I think you can understand why I never saw the movie. I thought it was about a soul food kitchen. <laughs> So, Mr. President, no Shark Week for you. I used to be a fan of Shark Week until all the shows got really boring and then I have celebrities like uh, dive with sharks and they had Shaq dive with a shark one time. And, it and they want to got... make sharks weak. That's what the left wants to do. They want to take our strong predators and turn them weak. Weak, woke sharks. That's what we want. Weak. I like Shark Week, E E K, meaning like a calendar week. But I think the left wants them shark week. W E E E K, which means not strong. Uh, it's close, but not exactly. Well, they add the extra E for a sort of extra to make it weak. Mm -hmm. So, not a fan of shark week. Understandable. I'm not a fan of shark week anymore either. You know what's crazy right now? There's an ad on my computer for breast cancer. Mm -hmm. But it's a it's a woman with a very big breast just holding it, hmm. and I'm going, okay, yeah, I'll pay attention if you, <laughs> yeah, if they've all got, we have to save the great breasts. I agree with that. The great white breasts or any color breasts. Uh, I'm not against tan breasts. Okay, you know if they spend a lot of time at the beach, mm -hmm. so we can support tan breasts as well. Okay. And Mr. President, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about your ex-wife, Ivana Trump. I was nowhere near. I was nowhere near her when I she fell down. Excuse me. I wasn't accusing you. Down, well, and I didn't say you were, but now it sounds like you are. When she fell down the stairs completely alone with nobody around her, I was not there. And... I, you know, this is a good time because I believe, you know, death of a family person is a very sad and sacred thing, which is why I want to encourage everybody to go to our Patreon and join the $10 level where you can see a strong video where I describe Ivanka's, excuse me, whoa, I wouldn't even be doing, we would not even be doing a podcast if Ivanka had passed away. We would take the week off, which we never do, very strong. But for Elvira, uh, her mother, we take we, you know, we're okay doing strong podcasting. And if you join the Patreon at the ten dollar level, which you really should, it's sort of ridiculous how many people so say, well, next month, sir, there's a strong video of me, exclusive description of Ivana's last moments on trump's green earth <laughs> well it trump's green earth <laughs> now i wanted to ask you it um she is the the mother to don jr uh, ivanka and eric uh, how are how are they dealing with this oh well, they're sad they're obviously sad it's a uh, it's a tough thing when you lose uh, Ivana or well, the person who did the birth. So it's called the mother. Right. That, well, that's, I knew that. Okay. okay. I knew that. Some people say mom. Some people say mother. Some people say other things. <laughs> but uh, I know. What, what did you say the third one? Aaron? Eric, Eric, Eric Trump. Him as well. He was very mm -hmm. upset. And uh, Ivanka was not too happy. And, and Don Jr. was uh, you know, doing a lot of cocaine with Kim Gargoyle. 
and that's how he mourns. It's called uh, mourning powder. <laughs> that's what, we, what, what they call it. And it's it's very tough because she was a tough lady. She was a talented lady. She was, until she got very ugly, she was very beautiful. <laughs> and uh, that's where I developed my sort of taste for women desperate for green cards. I developed a real uh, affection uh, for them. That's why that's why mashed potatoes and I are, are married today because uh, Ivana laid out uh, the path where I knew I could get beautiful women desperate to stay in this country. So I thank her for that. And uh, hopefully, you know, when melanoma passes away in the next couple of weeks, hopefully, then we will uh, be on to a fourth. Did you attend the funeral? I know I don't like funerals. I find them very depressing. Did your children attend the funeral? Don oh. Jr., Iv Don Jr., Ivanka, and Eric, did they attend the funeral or speak at the funeral? Do you know of? Uh, I don't even know if there's been a funeral yet. I think I, I'll, I'm looking for an Evite. Do you ever get one of these, the Evite? Yeah. So nobody sent me an Evite yet. So um, I might golf. I might golf uh, that day. You know, it's good golf weather, 98 and humid. I've never seen an Evite for a funeral before. Is that popular? Well, it's very, it's very easy. You know, you just, and it feels like you're getting an invitation. You know, you open up the little digital envelope and all of a sudden the Grin Reaper pops out and says you are cordially invited <laughs> to Adele's funeral, Adele Trump. And we go and it's uh, very nice. And I actually have a, uh, if I don't make it, I've already arranged for fast food. You know how I did for the college teams? Yes. We're going to have huge fast food spreads at her at her after funeral party. That's, that's very nice of you. I um, <clears throat> wanted to know, has she, when you were married to her, was she clumsy or didn't have very good balance because... She, no, she was she was a skier. She had incredible balance. Because the way she passed away is she she fell down the stairs. Yes. You are you, why are you implying that I pushed her? I didn't say you pushed her. I no, was I just, said you implied. It's called implied. I I was asking if she was like clumsy. And no, not at all. Great okay. balance. And then I was saying, don't do you think there could be foul play? Because she had great balance, great skier, and fell down the stairs. I don't like these accusations. <laughs> I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just asking you your opinion. I gave a very strong, very personal, very, a lot of people said very touching. Okay, a lot more sympathy than you. A statement on our Patreon, and I'm, I want to let that, I'll answer any questions. Obviously, uh, Martha Maples is very excited now uh, because she's now the oldest surviving ex-Trump wife. <laughs> she excited or nervous? I know, I think she's excited because she got totally cut out with our prenup so she she will not get a dime it's really uh who's her name what's it tracy her daughter tracy trump i'm gonna push excuse me uh i keep hoping she'll fall down some stairs was what was melania's reaction mesopotamia is she consoling you was she trying malaria to talk okay about malaria it? What, what excuse me, mal malaria had a very you know she they never got along I never got along, but she was very respectful. You know, she said. I hope she's. There's a saying in Transylvanian. <laughs> when one of your enemies dies, it's. <laughs> which translates to, I hope you don't burn in hell forever. 
which is a very touching sort of respectful way of her saying like i hope you are uncomfortable but not forever <laughs> I'm, I'm more impressed that you you knew the translation of both english and um <laughs> and mesopotamian tech stuff I took a, uh, people don't know this, but I took a Rosetta Stone uh, Transylvania course <laughs> for languages. So I, I know very well, because I always had a feeling uh, melanoma was talking behind my back. And so I learned, so I know what she was saying. <laughs> That's a very popular saying in Transylvania. It's next to make like you jump, you can yell and strike and strike and strike and And that that one means that's when she would say, you know, during she would say, "You can make me, you can make me suck your dick, but that doesn't mean I won't bite it off." That's another very famous Transylvanian <laughs> phrase that melanoma has, and it's sort of a way of saying, "I will please you sexually, but you have to be nice about it, or else I'm in control." So they have a lot of wisdom in uh, in 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 Slutyvania, where she's from. Very, very wise, wiser than just because she's a very beautiful model doesn't mean she also doesn't have a uh, strong wisdom. And she President... says this one to it, you know, our son yes. is always floating around, uh, Billy, yeah. and she always says this phrase to Billy. She goes, I look in shipper, which means, well, that, that phrase means. Eat your vegetables, or you'll grow up tall and weak and get chopped down like a tree. <laughs> Join the Patreon, everyone. We have new patrons coming on every single day now. We appreciate everyone out there. Some people are trying out the $5 level. Some people are just going to perfect 10 because they hear how awesome the live episodes are. Join at patreon.com slash MPGA. And don't forget on July 28th, that is Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. We're doing this for all the West Coasters. 9 p.m. Eastern. Is it called Shinzo Abe Palooza? Is that the correct name of it? Yes. Yeah, so Shinzo Abe Palooza. You do not want to miss that. And that is on July 28th. Join the Patreon at patreon.com slash MPGA. Mr. President, we've, we've discussed Joe Rogan before as I think the biggest podcast, one of the biggest podcasts in the world, I'd have to say. Set tech, you know, I keep giving you chances. Joe Rogan has the, it's called the second biggest podcast in the world next to us of course now he took another shot at you i think you should just get in a ring with him and we know how big you are and how strong you are and you should just show this little midget joe rogan who the real man is he called you a man baby do you have any rebuttal is it worth even talking about Joe, Joe Rogan is the size of a steroided up fetus that a Democrat wants to pull out of the womb and kill after eight months. He is a giant old eight month fetus on steroids. Okay. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And notice he's getting very tough now. Notice he didn't say anything when I was president. He was always saying, well, I don't know. I think maybe, bro bro i think maybe bro bro and now he's very tough now that sleepy joe he's very tough on trump oh i'm i'm speaking my mind i'm steroid joe look at me well watch his tune change when i went in 2024 when i beat the crap out of his his little friend ron to suck ass when i beat him all of a sudden you're gonna see joe rogan going oh well uh the economy's better bro and guess what, bro? Uh, I'm taking more supplements because I'm four foot one and I don't want to get uh, aborted in the maternity ward if they mistake me for a big angry fetus. 
So, bro, mm -hmm. let's support Trump, bro. The left is the problem, bro. He's got no integrity, no consistency. I have no respect for steroid Joe or Sleepy Joe. They should go on tour together. <laughs> Sleepy and steroid. The Jomosexuals. Mike Pence would probably like that. We are going to talk about Mike Pence right now. That is a great segue, Mr. President. And I wanted well, to talk. you know what? Yeah. I had a housekeeper that used to shop at Safeway, so I support Safeway. Well, um, <laughs> Mike Pence, he seems to be endorsing opposite candidates as you, and he is trying to make a statement about it. I don't know if he is going to make a run in 2024 and i want to ask you a question about yeah he's gonna to run to a truck stop <laughs> what nickname would you give and mike when he pence? gets to the truck stop he's gonna run a train so he's gonna do a lot of running <laughs> what what nickname would you give mike pence if if he was gonna run against you if you did run in 2024 ah that's a well you know what? I would do it just because the censors and the woke left wouldn't like it. Pussy pants. <laughs> oh, sir. Sir, I have great respect for you, sir. Shut up, pussy pants. <laughs> Six pence, none the gayer. Now, he's endorsing Karen Taylor Robson who is the opposite candidate that you are endorsing. He's definitely doing this. I don't even know if he really likes this, this uh, Karen Taylor Robson and every, every Republican woman, almost all of them go by three names. Why is that? Well, I think we're going to talk about one soon that doesn't go by three names. Cause she's got two little cannons in her shirt. <laughs> we are going to talk about Lauren Boebert in a minute, but why do a lot of them like a, uh, What's it, Marjorie Taylor Green? What she goes by three. This Karen Taylor Robson goes by three. Is that like uh does it make you more distinguished, do they think? Or no, I think I think it? in their heart they're serial killers. <laughs> I think they wanna uh you know chop up bodies and murder people, and that's what we like. We like killers, we like tough people. So they, you know, John Wilkes Booth, Lee Harvey Oswald, uh Martin Taylor Green, you know, very tough people. Now, him endorsing the opposite candidate of you, does that bother you because the press is turning into like he is just going against you to make you to, to distance himself from you? Listen, you go to a, if you went to a nightclub, okay, and you see beautiful women and you want to talk to one and you see Mike Pence is talking to one, you don't feel any competition. You walk right up there and say, unless you want your nails done or your hair done or to talk about Bravo television, you're barking up the wrong tree with this big Q-tip of gayness, Mike Pence. <laughs> so whoever he endorses is an automatic stamp of weakness and possible gayness. No. Like he's like, he's like, remember Philadelphia? Remember with, with, Colin Hanks. Hanks. Colin's a son who wasn't in it, but Tom Hanks was in it. Oh? Tom Hanks, his father. Cast that was away. Denzel, Was Denzel Washington was in Philadelphia. A very racist. It's not even close. Den okay. You know Denzel Washington? He's a very proud African-American actor. I don't think he'd like being he called Tom Hanks. Okay. Okay, so George My Washington apologies. is in Philadelphia. <laughs> And they're all getting AIDS. And I think that's what Mike Pence does when he goes and endorses somebody. Their campaign gets AIDS, just like uh, Tom Hardy in Philadelphia. Now, Mike Pence was your vice president. Allegedly. Allegedly. And the right was really behind him. Well, now, that's what he prefers. <laughs> yeah, he was the GOP. He was the GOP. We call them the geo power bottom. Now, 
do you think the right is going to turn on him if he distances himself from you? Well, sure. Why? Would, of course they would. Well, because... he's very he's he's very religious man. He, I feel, was extremely right before linking up with you. So he still had the reputation of being extremely right wing and had some sort of a following, but you definitely put him in the limelight and um, more popular. But you really think people are just going to turn on him? Yes. All right. I guess we'll find out. And uh, if that does happen, I can't wait for you to call him Pussy Pence. It's going to be great. Now, you wanted to talk about Lauren Boebert. She had a uh, gun-themed restaurant called Shooters. And I think under, it almost lasted 10 years. And I and thought that, having a, having a come, a come, uh, come themed restaurant called Shooters, I thought was very <laughs> progressive and very sexual. And I liked it. That's what I liked about, you know, you go to Boebert and she's like, Hey, Mr. President, sir, welcome to our come restaurant. You can shoot in me. <laughs> and that's when I knew that she might be a uh, wife number four. And I think she's still very potentially a wife number four. That's awesome. Good for, good for Bobert. Is she a potential running mate? Because that would be history. Wife slash running mate slash VP slash fuck buddy slash fuck buddy. Uh, I think that would be strong. I think, and don't you think it's time that we have a hot? first lady like a nice little cute you know like when the when the tourists visit they can see her naked pressed against the, the second floor window <laughs> getting getting drilled like a like like strong american oil <laughs> and you know the terrorists can go look at our president look at what he's doing to our beautiful vice president slash wife slash first lady slash fuck buddy slash <laughs> special needs cutie and <laughs> I think it would be great for our country. You think Sleepy Joe and Joe, but no, they're having milk, tucking each other in and going, good night, sweetie. And he's going, who the hell are you, Jack? But instead, the country and the world would see a strong president and a hot, cute first lady fuck buddy. And it would inspire people, I think. If this did happen, two questions. One, would you open a new restaurant for her? And what would you call it is my first question. Would you get her back into the restaurant business? Because I'm sure you'd want her to spend some time on her own because I know you're a man who likes the time for himself. Would you open a new restaurant for her? And what would you encourage her to name it? Uh, it would be called Back Doors. <laughs> and what kind of food would it serve? uh chocolate pudding uh <laughs> just chocolate pudding that's it that's sort of a a sort of a chocolate fondue type of type of restaurant called back doors and i think it would do very well and my second question is that so far you only have one woman lined up for netflix in the future and that is your daughter ivanka would you sign Lauren Boebert to a contract with Netflix? Uh, I think that's an inter interesting question. Uh, I would have to talk it over with Lauren. Um, you know, because if she's my wife, I would insist on her only doing scenes with, with me, with Ivanka, you know, family. Mm -hmm. And... You know, it'd send a strong sort of family values message. So I would have to see, we'd have to talk it over as a couple and as a family to see if, you know, if she was interested in doing that. But if she was interested, I could see us uh, doing a deal with her, sure. I would also like to see uh, Sydney Sweeney of Euphoria. I think we're going to, we're going to try and sign her to a, just a crazy, a crazy, you know, like a Deshaun Watson type deal. Okay. 
who also will actually be doing some Netflix content for Speaking us. Speaking of the of the Sean Watson, what did you think of uh, all the allegations against him? He was a quarterback for the Houston Texans. I think actually, had... technically, his technically he's a quarter black. <laughs> okay, I did not know that was the technical name for him. I think he had something. It was more than fifty massages, and yeah, it was like almost... sixty. It was like 66 accusations, and I thought so weak. I would have gone for 69 accusations. <laughs> what did you think about the accusations of him either wanting to masturbate in front of his massage therapist or asking them to finish him off? What are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's all true, and do you think he will actually play this season in the NFL? I think he'll play. I think he deserves to play. Uh, you know, I'm torn, obviously, between not wanting to trust women and not wanting to trust blacks. <laughs> so this is like the immovable, the unstoppable vagina versus the Im immovable African-American. <laughs> and so it's very tough to decide. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. But I, I you know. He's, he's, he's going to, you know, the city of Cleveland probably doesn't give two shits about what the hell he did as long Definitely as they not. win, as long as they can win nine or 10 games. That's how sad they are in Cleveland. Oh, we went eight and eight, totally worth all the massage rapes. <laughs> uh, so maybe that's what they, you know, what would be funny if they called themselves the Cleveland masseuses. Uh, they, yeah, I mean, the Browns is a kind of a crappy name. I think anything is better than that. The dog pound, but the brown. We could probably, I don't get, it. We could probably get a, a franchise of Lauren Bobert's back door in the Brown Stadium and call it Brown Town. <laughs> Marketing came full circle right there. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about, Mr. President. It's more of a starfish than a circle, but okay. Yes. <laughs> last, last thing I wanted to talk to you about. J-Lo and Ben Affleck. J-Lo, I think, has been married, I think, four times. This is her, her fifth marriage. Would you tr trust a woman, not a man, a woman who's been married that many times, have had that much drama with all these different men, especially celebrities, and now she settles down with Ben Affleck and they get married? What are your thoughts on this marriage? What are your thoughts on J-Lo? Um, I'd like to hear your opinion on this well i have said uh, multiple times that j-lo is you know the queen of the mexican province of puerto rico so mm -hmm. we have great respect for her title and her talent uh, she's a beautiful woman she's one of the most beautiful women on the planet and Everybody talks about how many times she's been married, but you know, there's millions of men who would probably want to marry her. So she's really still being very selective. And I think Ben Affleck is a, is a uh, you know, a solid choice. I, I think there's better choices, but I think, I think it's a, it's a solid choice. And he obviously, you know, I, I respect Ben Affleck because he had within like the pandemic, he had Ana de Armas, who was a very talented, beautiful, young Spanish woman. And he had Jayla. And that's called, you know, that's not since Columbus, I think, has a white <laughs> just done such strong dominance over, over Spanish women. <laughs> and so I have great respect for that. We call him Affleck the Conquistador. <laughs> the Conquistador. Edit that. I like Kakistador better. Nobody will get that. We'll write it in the title and they'll say, what's this mean, sir? And I'll say, just unsubscribe to the podcast, you <laughs> stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> Mr. President, um, thank you once again for spending another week with us, sometimes multiple times a week. You're a very busy man and we uh, all appreciate it. For everyone out there who has not gone to the Patreon 
join up. You are missing on missing out on hundreds of hours of bonus content. Patreon.com slash MPGA and sign up for the perfect 10 um, before the 28th because you do not want to miss Shinzo Abe Palooza. And again, that week, who are those photoshoppers out there? We would love to see a logo for possible i don't know if a t-shirt i don't know if the president is going to sign off on a t-shirt for shinzo abe palooza um maybe Never. bumper stickers maybe maybe coffee mugs i don't know maybe uh, we could talk but let's see a logo for shinzo abe palooza um, we're actually bringing in that. somebody to conduct we may bring in somebody to conduct a seance so that i can communicate with shinzo Oh my goodness. That would be great to hear him speak to you one last time. So everyone check that out. July 28th, 9 PM Eastern time. It's patreon.com slash M P G a. And um, that's it from here. Mr. President, uh, the floor is also check out my special something from nothing. If you haven't checked it out yet, it's on all streaming services and um, the floor is yours, Mr. President. Thank you. Rest in peace, Alicia Trump. <laughs> okay, guys. Hey, it's JL. First off, uh, folks who showed up in Boston, appreciate it. Thank you. Had a fun time. Um, just a couple shows coming up. I'm at Broadway Comedy Club in New York on the 27th at 7 p.m. doing a spot. And then I am uh, at the Mayo, uh, the, what, the Mayo, yeah, the Mayo Performing Arts Center in Morristown, New Jersey on August 19th. It's a lovely theater in a lovely town. So if you're anywhere in Jersey within reason, uh, I would recommend you go find a nice restaurant, have dinner and come to the show on August 19th. It's a Friday. Um, beyond that, obviously check out righteous PK podcast, uh, good stuff as always check out the, uh, the affiliated JL Patreon and, uh, hoping to have some news in the next several weeks. I've gotten one good update on my long suffering comedy special half blackface. So progress is finally being uh, made in a substantial way. So I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks to at least be able to update everybody on, uh, on where that's headed. Um, but beyond that, thanks for listening as always. Uh, and God help us all. <laughs>